After touring museums and shopping for provisions, we headed south on the Rideau Canal. The 125-mile canal, with its 47 locks, connects Ottawa to Kingston, Ontario. Opened in 1832, it was built as a precaution in case of war with the United States and is still in use today. It's the oldest continuously operated canal system in North America. The canal's construction was proposed shortly after the War of 1812, when there remained a persistent threat of attack by the United States on the British colony of Upper Canada. The objective was to bypass the stretch of the St. Lawrence River bordering New York State, a route that would have left the British supply ships vulnerable to attacks or blockades. Most of the locks are still hand-operated. Recreational boaters can travel between Ottawa and Kingston with ease. Some parts of the canal do get quite narrow. As many as a thousand of the canal construction workers died from malaria, other diseases, and accidents during blasting. Memorials to the fallen laborers have been erected along the canal route. Along the way, we were surprised and quite excited to cruise past this group of small steamboats. One of the great things about the loop is that you travel at a slow enough pace to befriend people at the locks. We ended up having supper with a couple of Canadians after going through this set of locks. I think we're going to need you to start the engine. The Jones Falls locks are in a beautiful setting. Ooh. 
After going through the flight, we checked out their hiking trails and blacksmith shop. She gave us several freshly made nails. The Rideau ends in Kingston, Ontario, where we were able to check out the Marine Museum and the Pump House Steam Museum. From Kingston, Ontario, we headed 62 nautical miles west to Trenton to start the 240-mile Trent Severn Waterway leg of our journey. This waterway has 44 locks and starts in Trenton and ends in Lake Huron's Port Severn. While leaving Campbellford, we went out of the channel and bent a prop. John tried to remove it at lock 17, but no luck. In Peterborough, we contacted a diver to help remove the prop and get us on our way. Canadian law requires that another certified diver be available in case of an emergency. In addition to the added safety, it adds to the expense. While in Peterborough, we visited their canoe museum, biked, and helped celebrate Canada Day, July 1st. Lock 21 on the Trent Severn is the Peterborough Lift Lock. The lock has two identical ship caissons, called bathtubs, in which boats ascend and descend. Both bathtubs are enclosed at each end by a pivoting gate. Each bathtub sits on a ram the shafts for which are sunk into the ground and filled with water, connected with a pipe that has a crossover control valve. The tubs are guided up and down by rails affixed to concrete towers. The tubs weigh 1,700 tons, are 140 feet long, 33 feet wide, and 7 feet deep. No external power is needed. The lift lock functions by gravity using the counterweight principle. One tub always ascends and one always descends during each locking cycle. When one tub reaches the top position, it stops 12 inches below the water level of the upper reach and the control valve is closed. The Peterborough lift lock moves boats up or down 65 feet. Wish they were all that smooth and fast, huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> wow. Don't step off the back. <laughs> Trent University opened to students in 1964 and currently has approximately 7,000 students. While not caught on videotape, we encountered a near-catastrophic event this day on Lock 25. A large boat in front of us forgot to loosen a line as the water level receded and the boat came out of the water. A small commotion with people running and shouting ended with the line being cut with a knife. 
The boat surged, nearly hitting a small boat to its side. The moral of the story? Remember to tend your lines. We spent the 4th of July in Fenelon Falls. At 1 a.m., our boat was boarded by someone who helped himself to beer that was in a cooler on the back deck. Lock 37, the Kirkland Lift Lock, is similar to the Peterborough Lock and ascends or descends about 50 feet. This is one of the pivoting gates that was mentioned earlier. Tied up at Bull Solver, we waited for a storm to pass. A tornado actually touched down very close to us. We passed through miles of farm country in anticipation of the Big Shoot Marine Railway. The Big Chute is a boat lift at Lock 44 of the waterway. First, boats are secured in the cradle. The cradle then transports the boats along tracks on an inclined plane over a change of height of about 60 feet. It's the only